Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Shri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakta Vrinda so today we are celebrating the auspicious advent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I was just recently listening to a lecture given by one devotee in Vrindavan, and he was describing how uh, he had some connections with the Madhva Sampradaya, the, the Dupi people. In Udupi, Madhva Tarya's base, and uh, one of the, the very prominent Acharya there in Udupi is the, the Pijari, the Pijwari Mat. And the devotee was describing the Pijwari Mat, Sanyasi. He's a very famous man. He just left the body just just last year. He just departed from the world. He was in his 90s. So he is very he was very well known, very loved and respected everywhere. So he was uh, speaking to all the people of the Madhva line, and he was telling them that we all accept Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as being the incarnation of Lord Sri Krishna. And he was establishing very clearly the position of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Other sampradayas, they know about Lord Chaitanya, but they don't recognize Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as being an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. They simply think of him as being a devotee. But now, with the Pujari Mat, the Matva line, they're also recognizing the position of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that he is not just simply a great devotee, but he is actually the Swayam Bhagavan himself coming to perform his wonderful pastimes. And of course, evidence is there in the scriptures also by which we recognize Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Evidence is there in the scriptures, particularly in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The verse is there, spoken by Karabhajana Muni, who was one of the nine Yogendras. And he was speaking to Nimiraj, Nimiraj the king of Idea. He was inquiring about the Lord's incarnations in different ages. And so Karabhajana Muni was describing how the Lord comes in different yugas. In the Satya Yuga, he comes in the white color, and in the Trita Yuga, he comes in the red color, and in the Kali Yuga, he's a blackish color. And when he came to the describe how the Lord comes in the Kali Yuga, he described that he comes and his color is not blackish. Of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, but he is not blackish, but rather he is yellow, he is golden color. And Srimad Bhagavatam mentions Krishna Varnam, Tevish Akrishnam, 
Sangha Pangrista Parshadam, Yagnaye Sankirtantraye, Yajanti Hi Sumede Saha. So, Lord Krishna, the incarnation in the Kali Yuga is being described that he is a Krishna. He's not blackish. In fact, he's yellowish color. And so, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he fits that description. And he was further described as his activities were all Krishna Varna. They were all in relationship to Lord Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's whole life was dedicated to Krishna. From the very beginning of his life, there was a chanting of the holy names because on the day of the Gorpunima, in the particular year when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared, which was in the year 1486, at that time there was a solar eclipse. And when there's an eclipse, then it's customary that all the Hindu people, followers of the Vedic culture, that they will take bath in the Ganga and they will chant the holy name. So that was the situation at the time of the birth of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that everyone was engaged in chanting the holy name. And indeed the Mohammedan people were also chanting because the Mohammedan people, they like to mimic. They like to, you know, joke and ridicule the Hindu people for their chanting. And, and so they were also chanting. The, the, the Hindus, they were chanting, they were in the Ganga and chanting, and the Muslims were also chanting. In this way, the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was described, how he was heralding the nature of activities throughout his life. So the pastimes of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are described to be Odarya, Lord Krishna appears in Puri, uh, rather in Vrindavan, and his pastimes are Madhurya. In Dwarka, Lord Krishna's pastimes are Aishwarya. But in Mayapur, the Lord's pastimes are Odarya. They're full of great mercy. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is enjoying He's having a very nice time performing his wonderful pastimes. The childhood Leela is full of bliss. We hear how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as a baby, he would cry. You know, you, you have a child, you know, when you have a child, how they cry from time to time. If they don't cry, it's not natural. So you expect children to cry, and usually it means the child wants some attention. And so when Nimai, in other words, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he would begin to cry, then the different ladies would come and pick up the child, and they would try to comfort the child. But the only, they found out the only way they could pacify the child was when they started to sing the holy names of the Lord. So this became a regular activity. The child would cry, the ladies would pick him up, and they would hold him and cajole him, but he'd be crying and crying, he wouldn't stop, until they began to sing some kirtan. And as soon as they began to do kirtan, then the child would smile and would be happy. And in this way, all the ladies began to understand that when the child's crying, they have to do kirtan. So this was, even as a baby, Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya, Sri Chaitanya, Mahaprabhu, he was inducing all the people to chant the holy name. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoyed doing different things just to sometimes agitate his mother. Just like one day his mother came home and found him sitting 
where all the garbage was. You know, today, you know, we have a different garbage. Today, we have the plastic, plastic and polythene, different things like that, which are around. But in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the garbage was all the earthen pots. Earthen pots. They use them one time, then they throw them away. Just like if you go to Jagannath Puri and you get prasadam from Jagannath Puri, all the prasad is cooked in earthen pots. Even today, they've kept up the system over thousands of years. They continue to cook in the earthen clay pots. So, one day, Mother Shaiji came home and she was shocked to see her child was sitting where all the clay pots were being thrown. You know, after you take the food, you eat the food, then you just simply throw the pot away. And the pots are made from earth. So earth is degradable. It came from the earth and in time it will go back to the earth. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the young child, was sitting there on top of all the clay pots, which is considered contaminated, unclean area. Mother Sachi was surprised. But what are you doing there? Not only was he sitting there on the clay pots, but he was eating the pot. So Mother said, she said, why, why are you eating that? And at that time, Nimai, the young child, spoke to his mother in personal philosophy. He said to his mother, well, you fed me, you gave me these sweets, you know, Bengali sweets. They are things like sandesh and rasgulla and Burfi, these things. He said, you gave me these sweetmeats. These sweetmeats are a transformation of earth. So I am eating the earth. There's no difference between the earth and the sweets. What is the problem? You gave me these sweets. They're simply a transformation of earth. They're produced from the earth. What is the harm? I am eating air. Mother said she was shocked to hear this impersonal philosophy from her young child. However, Mother said she is a devotee and she was not bewildered. She was not influenced by the thing, by the teaching, by that talk of her son. Rather, she corrected her son and she told him that yes, it may be that sweets are a transformation of earth, but when you eat sweets, you will be healthy. If you eat dirt, your health will not be so good. And she gave the example, she said, just like if I have a lump of earth. So the lump of earth in the form of a pot, it can be a container for water. I can I can put water or I can put different foodstuffs into the pot and keep. But if it's just in a lump of earth and I pour water onto the earth, then simply the earth will become like mud. But it's not the same. You have to understand there's a difference between the earth in the form of a pot and earth and just simply a lump of clay. In the same way, there's a difference between eating sweets and eating dirt. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he heard this, then he thanked his mother. He said, oh, thank you so much. You have enlightened me. Now I will never eat dirt again. And so this was some of the pastimes which took place. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a young child, he enjoyed 
amazing pastimes with his friends. One day a snake was caught, was crawling in the yard. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as a young child, he thought of the snake as being Anantasesha, and he got on the back of the snake as if to be carried on the snake. Mother said she was shocked. Oh no, what is happening? My child may be bitten by the snake. This was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoying. Another time, there were two thieves and they saw Nimai. They saw Nimai decorated with so many ornaments. It's customary in the Hindu society. They like to put some ornaments on the young child. They will put bracelets on the arms and ankle bells around the legs. Hmm. Different ornaments. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was wearing so many ornaments as a young child. So these two thieves, they saw the child with so many valuable ornaments. They thought, let's take this child. We'll, we'll take the child and we can steal all of his ornaments. So they picked up the child and they ran off with him. But by the influence, by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by his influence, he arranged that the thieves simply went around in circles. They thought they were going far away from the home of Sanchimata. But after traveling for some time, they found themselves back in the same place which they had left earlier. And when they saw that they'd come back to the same place where the child had been taken, they thought, oh my goodness, we better leave the child here. People may be looking for the child now. If they see us with the child, they will beat us and they will kill us for stealing the child. So this was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu enjoying some fun with the thieves that by the influence of his yoga maya, he brought them back to his own home. On another day, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was told, no more school. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was the second son of his parents. He had an elder brother. Actually, Mother Sachi had already delivered eight times, eight girls, but they had all died at birth. So after a long time, she was successful in delivering a child, a son. The eldest son was named Vishwaru. And he's the elder brother. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's the second son. So Mother Sachi, you know, Bengali ladies are very attached to their children. They love their child so much. And what to speak of if your child is someone like Nima, who is non-different from the personality of Godhead. So they had great affection. And his elder brother, Vishwarup, is considered to be the expansion also of Sankarshan, not different from Lord Balaram. So the elder brother, as he was growing up, his parents were going to arrange marriage for him. But when he heard that his parents were going to arrange marriage, Vishwarup, the eldest brother, the eldest son, he decided I should leave home. I don't want to enter into family life. So Vishwarup left home. He disappeared. His parents were going to arrange a beautiful young girl to be his wife, but Vishwarup didn't want it. Instead, he left home and he went off and became a sannyasi. 
So when Mother Sachi and Jagannath Mishra heard how their eldest son had gone off and taken sannyas, they thought, we had given too much education for that child. Because it had such a, such a good education, he's understood the nature of material life. And he doesn't want to be involved in material activities. Therefore, he's gone off and taken sannyas. So they thought, we will not give any more education for Nimai, the second son, because if he also gets education, he may end up thinking the same way as his elder brother. And if he thinks the same way as his elder brother, then he will leave home and he'll go and take sannyas also. So, we're not going to send Nimai to school anymore. Let him stay at home. It doesn't matter if he's illiterate. He doesn't need to learn to read and write. If he learns reading and writing and so many things, if he gets education, it will just simply cause him to want to renounce the world. So better, he doesn't get education. We'll just keep him at home. So Nimai was told, no more school for you. You just stay at home. You just play. You can go out and play all day. So Nimai, being told that he doesn't need to go to school anymore, he begins to start to play. And he really creates a lot of havoc around the neighborhood. You know, when children don't go to school, they don't get education, then they create a lot of mischief and they do a lot of uh, bad things. So Nimai would do, he, would, he was doing like this, he started to create trouble. If he saw a little baby laying sleeping, he would come and pinch the baby. He would pinch the baby to make it cry. Once the baby started to cry, he would laugh and run away. And sometimes he would pour, eat, pour water into the ear of the baby to make the baby cry. Other times, Nimai would go with other boys and they would put a big cloth over their heads and pretend they were like bulls and they would go into the gardens, they would go into people's gardens and they would break their banana trees, knock over the different plants and things which people were growing in the garden. And then they would, sometimes they would even go in the night and they would knock on the doors and make fierce sounds like wild animals are coming. And the people in their home at night, they would be afraid hearing the mind and other boys coming. They didn't know what was going on. What is the sound? Other times, the young girls would go to the Ganga and the young girls would do their puja because the young girls, naturally, they want to get married and they want to get a good husband. So they would go and do puja at the Ganga and they would bring offerings of flowers and sweetmeats and they would go to the Ganga to do their puja. And Nimai would see them and he would come and tell them, you should make your offerings to me. I am the god of Ganga. I am the god of all these other gods. They are all worshipping me. You want to offer to them, you should offer to me. And this way the girls would all laugh and they would, they would not take Nimai very seriously. But Nimai would curse them and would say, if you don't offer to me, if you don't offer to me, I will curse you that you will marry an old man who has many co-wives. 
so the girls naturally, they didn't want that. They didn't want to marry some old man and be a co-wife. So they said, all right, all right, you take, we'll offer to the, and they would let Nimai take their offerings. So this was a, something of the behavior of Nimai. Sometimes Nimai, every day he liked to go to Ganga and swim in the Ganga. And when people, the Brahmins would be there at the Ganga, they would be chanting the Gayatri, standing up to the waist or up to the neck in water, chanting Gayatri. Nimai would come swimming along, he would dive underneath and he would grab the leg. They would be chanting the Gayatri, Nimai would grab their legs and they would fall over, they'd fall in the Ganga. But this way Nimai would disturb them. Other people, they were sitting on the side of the Ganga and they're doing meditation, sitting in their Padma Asana, meditating, and Nimai would come and get water and throw it on them. Now, like this, people would get very angry at Nimai. So much so that they would go to his father and complain. But Nimai would trick his father. He said, No, oh father, no, I'm studying. Look, my hands are all ink. I've been writing. I've been writing. <laughs> like this, Nimai would do many bad things. Of course, at one point, he was doing so much mischief that the neighbors all came to Jagannath Mishra and they complained, look, let your son go to school. But Jagannath Mishra said, if he goes to school, I'm worried. He may take sannyas, he may leave home, he may not, be a, he may not stay in the family life. But the people told Jagannath Mishra, well, whatever will happen, will happen. You cannot change the will of destiny. If he's going to leave home, it will happen. But let him get education. Because if you just simply leave him to roam around, just simply goes everywhere and creates havoc for all of us, it's just simply a big disturbance. So you please send him to school. And so Jagannath Misha had to relent. And so Nimai went back to school and he studied. And of course, he was a, a brilliant student. He studied everything. He would just learn one time and everything would be around him. And so by the age of 11, he opened his own school and he became a teacher and he had students. And he would go everywhere. He was teaching Nyaya or logic. And he liked to discuss with people, but he was so powerful, nobody could ever argue with him. No one could ever come close to defeating him. In fact, the situation became so bad that when they saw him coming, they'd run away and they'd go and hide. They didn't want to even meet him because it was so difficult to talk to Nima. So this was his academic, his scholar, his pastime of scholarship, where he's being the great scholar, and so much so he got the name Nimai Pandit. Pandit meaning learned scholar. And he, then as a young man, he met with Digvijay, Keshava Kashmiri, and they had their famous debate on the bank of the Ganga. So all of these pastimes are all full with great mercy, wonderful happiness and pleasure. Mahaprabhu was enjoying. Later on, when he takes sannyas, it's a very different mood. And it's much more serious. The, we did have one Swami, maybe you, we have this Samadhi here, he left the body here in Mayapur, His Holiness Sridhar Swami. He was, he was known as the Happy Swami. 
because he liked to smile on you. Usually sannyasis were very, you know, very dry and, you know, we're not, there's not much humor and so on. But Sridhar was a happy swami. So, so no, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was very serious as a sannyasi. There was no joking and playing games and so on. Very serious in chanting the holy name and in propagating Krishna consciousness to everyone. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chose to advent himself in this holy land of Mayapur. The, this Mayapur Dham had said it is the creation of Srimati Radharani, that she created this place simply for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. Now, certainly there's so much pleasure here in Mayapur, it's different from Vrindavan. Vrindavan, very hot in the winter, in the summer, very cold in the winter, a lot of thorns on the ground, and you know, it's not such a picturesque place as Mayapur. In Mayapur, we have the Ganga. In Vrindavan, they have the Yamuna, but the Yamuna is just, of course, they say the Yamuna is 1,000 times the Ganga, because the Yamuna is the transformation of Radha Salat for Krishna. However, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu chose to appear here in Mayapur Dham and in this way instill in everyone the chanting of the holy names. And we see it's the culture here, how much people love to chant the holy name. The culture has never been lost. Before Mahaprabhu appeared here, Jayadeva Goswami also was here. When, when we go to Champahati, we hear about Jayadeva Goswami, that he used to reside there in Champahati before he went to live in Jagannath Puri. So this Mayapur was certainly the place of many great souls. They lived here and they relished topics of Lord Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also took this message of Krishna out of the temples and delivered it all over Bharatvash. He wanted everyone. And of course it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who predicted that the holy name would be heard in every town and in every village all over the planet. So today we're enjoying the legacy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We can see here in Mayapur today how there's so many people here. The place is just swarming with people everywhere. And they've all come to hear and to share something of Krishna consciousness. So that is certainly very pleasing to all the Acharyas. Srila Prabhupada used to say to people like Jataka Swami Maharaj, he would say to them, I have given you the kingdom of God, now develop it. So this is Mayapur. It is none different from the kingdom of God. And we're so fortunate that we could be here on this auspicious day. Actually, one year we were here on Gaur Purnima, and that day there was a solar eclipse. There was actually an eclipse, and we all went to the Ganga. We all went to the Ganga to chant the holy name while the eclipse was going on. Very special. I don't know if any incarnations of God appeared that day. <laughs> but we know Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the Lord Himself. You can study His astrological chart and you can see all the auspicious signs in His birth chart. 
and similarly from his physical features, everything on his body was very auspicious. The long arms down to the knees is very auspicious. The lotus eyes spread across his face, very auspicious. All auspicious markings on his hands and feet, everything was there, showing auspiciousness. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is our Mahapadanaya avatar. But not just simply avatar, he is Krishna himself. Jiva Goswami explains, he said, in this Divya Yuga, the Lord has only three incarnations. The Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, and the Satya Yuga, the Treta Yuga, and Dwapara Yuga. And that incarnation which, come, which came in the Dwapara Yuga comes again in the Kali Yuga. It is Krishna himself coming again in the Kali Yuga. It's not another incarnation, but the Krishna, the Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna, who appeared in the Dwapara Yuga, he came again in the Kali Yuga. Then we will ask, then why is he not blackish? Because he's not blackish, because he has assumed the mood of Srimati Radharani. He has come to relish the pleasure of being the devotee. When the Lord came in the Dwapara Yuga as Lord Krishna, he saw how Srimati Radharani's pleasure is a thousand or thousands of times greater than his pleasure. Therefore, Krishna said, I want to enjoy like her. I want to experience that pleasure. And that is why, why Lord Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And his color is not Krishna, but it's a Krishna. Srimati Radharani's color, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi. Radhe Vrindavaneshwari. Srimati Radharani's complexion is a golden color. And similarly, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his complexion is golden because he has assumed this Radha Baba, that mood of Srimati Radharani. So, in this way, we are remembering the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his glorious appearance in this world. So thank you very much, Hare Krishna, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada ki Jai, Bodhi Mandi, Karibol.